so many of our students and you know adults at this point just sort of suffer silently. And one of the things that I've discovered is that if we can help people just say things aloud, say things into the universe. For instance, it was so easy for me to say, today is a wonderful day, right? Yes. Now, I don't know, Willa, I would have said two weeks ago, today is not that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have a space. Yeah. I just sort of dealt with that for two weeks. And here we are now, though, we can speak. But really giving opportunity to begin to say things aloud. So I don't feel confident in my chemistry skills, which makes me anxious about my future as a physician, right? Being able to say that without feeling like the universe will crush you. Just say things aloud. Mm -hmm. The other thing is help your child become a student of history um, so that they're not surprised when complicated things happen. So for instance, right now, I'm talking about things that can easily be understood, right? Nobody should be surprised that just because you work hard, you don't get to be the CEO of Merck. It just doesn't happen that way. There are a whole lot of variables to go into that. And we can understand those things. So really sort of helping people not be surprised at how the world works, especially in ways that we understand quite well. I think that's really important. I think another thing that is probably really helpful um, to students of color, particularly black and brown ones, uh, when they come into the university, I think they are immediately forced to make a false choice. And that is yeah. often a false choice between whether they will be a black or brown person or whether they will be a university person. And I think that's sort of a really interesting paradigm to sort of force them into where all of a sudden they have to shell something that's very salient to them in order to gain access that other students have without thinking about it. So for me, I think that question and that false dichotomy actually creates an urgency around educating our students about the wholeness of themselves, which includes their gender, their ethnicity, their age, you know, disability status, you know, race, ethnicity, sex, all of that stuff is important. Uh, because it's what comes together to create the whole, the whole person rather than being forced to deal with that false question just about ethnicity. Yes. Because you can be black and be everywhere. You can be Hispanic and be everywhere. You can be Native American and be Asian, Hawaiian. You, know, you can be your ethnic self and still be every other thing. And I think that's really important for our students and really encouraging them to do that. And then the last thought I think is about... Um, I referenced this earlier just about being uh, listening and being heard. Um, but there is also the other sense of being seen and yeah. seeing others that I think is also important. And we don't uh, elevate that enough. Uh, we rely on, you know, what Sean Harper started to describe, you know, many years ago as um, serendipitous encounters. Mm. Somebody just happens to stumble onto somebody. And I'm one of them. We discovered serendipity has saved so many black men. Um, I remember, you know, when I was an undergrad, Gilbert Roshan, uh, who was, you know, a professor there at the time, saw me uh, on our avenue of the Oaks. And he said, hey, you're the computer kid, right? And he says, I need somebody who can be the student director of my urban studies and public policy lab. And I didn't know him. He had only read an article that I had gotten some fellowship with a new computer and, and, and <clears throat> history is made, right? Yes. But we can't rely on those separate serendipitous encounters because too many of us will be missed. And I think having your young man develop an interest in being seen by someone and then seeing that person and ultimately seeing others is probably the greatest advice I can give any yes. parent. 